the other big change this season is that for the first time Michael's going on the offensive and he and his team are sort of going after the company and I was wondering if you could sort of preview what's that going to entail this season who's involved what's going to be going down with that we like to joke it's a little bit like the A team it's got a little bit of a caperish Ocean's Eleven feel except people are still dying so it's still it's still very serious it's still life and death but I think Michael Lincoln Sarah Sucre Bellick Mahone and uh, a new character, a couple new characters, realize that um, it's time to stand and fight, that this threat is not going to go away, um, and uh, that the, the way to do that is to, to not focus on um, the puppets like they have been, Agent Kellerman and Gretchen B and Whistler, but to go after the puppet master. Uh, so we find out a lot more season four about who's been pulling the strings so far. And it's interesting that you mentioned Ocean's Eleven because I got a chance to see the first episode and mm -hmm. I, I felt like exactly that. It mm -hmm. looked a lot like that. It's a completely sort of new direction. It's yeah. the first season where there's no prison per se right. involved. And so is that like how is that different than previous se like how how does it how is it different than previous seasons? Mm. I, I think the prison this season is sort of allegorical in that everybody is wrestling with things in their own lives that they can't seem to escape. Mm -hmm. um, Michael, Mahone, Lincoln, Sarah, we're all coming into this season with, we're all coming into this season with a tremendous amount of baggage that we've accumulated on the journey of the, the three seasons. And so while they're not behind bars, they're certainly not free, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then, uh, just for Sarah, uh, when your head, when everyone thought Sarah Tancredi's head was in a box, there was a lot of fan outpouring of just, who were furious, I think, with the show, because they loved your character and they loved the interaction with Michael. And what was sort of, how, how did you respond to that overwhelmingly favorable reaction to, no, we can't believe this character is dead, we loved her? I can't express how grateful I am. I mean, it, um, I think often, I don't even I know, quite know how to say it, but as an actor, your relationship with an audience is a critical one, but often a silent one. And I started acting and sort of grew up in theater, and as soon as the show is over, they let you know exactly how they felt. And they're either standing and clapping or they're making no noise at all, and you think, I'll go hold back and I'll work harder and we'll make this right. With television, it's very different, because you don't really get a chance to interact with the audience in the same way. And I do very little of the sort of checking out of things online because I find it gets in my head in ways that I don't think are healthy. Um, so I didn't really know the way fans felt. And I mean, and then they got me my job back. And it's a job I value working with people who I adore and learn a tremendous amount from. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Thanks. Then <laughs> And then finally, just uh, for Wentworth, because you're incredibly popular amongst, like, you have a huge, rabid fan base. You're mm. the most popular celebrity, actually, on Buddy TV. Huh. And I'm wondering, how do you sort of deal with that overwhelming, sort of, rabid fan base? And, like, these, I'm imagining you have plenty of crazy, sort of, fan interaction stories. I, I don't. I, I, and, and I yes, actually, you do. <laughs> I don't. I honestly, I mean, a couple times, of, you know, I've, I've gotten some bizarre gifts on the street, like, like, um, pair of handcuffs at one time, but um, <laughs> with a pillow, um, which was still sweet. I mean, it came from the sweetest person, but uh, that's the thing. I don't feel particularly overwhelmed, which is great because the show has managed to have its, its impact, and uh, I, I love what I do, and I love that it touches people's lives in the way that it does, but um, in the States in particular, it's a relatively contained, modest uh, hit. It's only when we go abroad. Um, say France or, or Japan, um, that's when you feel like a rock star for a day, when it can, it can become um, very intense, the quality uh, changes. Um, uh, it's, it's actually like the best of both worlds, really, because uh, we get this great exposure and we're part of something that we're proud of, but at the same time we all get to lead our lives as relatively um, normally as possible. And we've also been, until this season, pretty insulated by being in Chicago and Dallas, I think. Mm. L.A. is a city that's partly about celebrity watching. There's mm. a sort of zoo <laughs> aspect of it that's very <laughs> odd. We had paparazzi our first day on set, which was yeah. creepy. Um, but I think that's a new thing for us now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wentworth, Sarah, thank you.